man is a social animal. As such, humans have always been moving in groups, small or big. While gatherers, families moved together and during the agrarian period, families settled in a place and grew there. While living, being together, it is essential that norms, rules and systems are followed by all in a group to provide predictability and thereby stability lest anarchy prevails. Such norms and rules of behavior made groups into a society. Society may be defined as a group of humans broadly distinguished from other groups by mutual interests, participation in characteristic relationships, shared institutions and a common culture. An institution may be defined as a custom, practice, relationship or behavioral pattern of importance in the life of a community or society. Thus, social institutions have always dominated human polity. One of the major social institutions in India has been caste. Now what is caste? Caste is a collection of families bearing a common name with a common ancestor and inherited profession forming a single homogeneous community. Castes are the units whose members follow a common occupation, social and ritual life and common culture and whose members are governed by the same authoritative body for example, the panchayat. A caste system is a type of social structure which divides people on the basis of inherited social status. Within a caste system, people are typically expected to marry and interact with people of the same social class. There is a tendency towards endogamy, meaning that people marry within the same caste exclusively. Within a caste system, each member generally knows his or her place and your social status is usually apparent to others as well. Caste in other cultures. Although people associate the caste system with India, many other cultures do practice the caste system in one way or the other. The word caste itself is actually borrowed from the Portuguese. By the year 1555, English speakers were using the word to refer to a race of men, adopting the Portuguese word caste. Although the word was used in English to describe race or breeding, in Portuguese it was more widely used in reference to the stratified society of Portugal. When the Indian social system was encountered in the year 1600s, it came to be described as a caste system in the Portuguese sense. The 18th century German society was divided into princes, nobles, burghers, peasants and serfs between whom no marriage was possible. Korea and Japan also had the practice of untouchability. The origin of caste system in India. The origin of the caste system in India was initially racial. It is perhaps when a white race, the Aryans, coming from the northwest conquered the dark colored races inhabiting India at that time, probably 5000 years ago or so, that the caste system took root in India. Interestingly, caste system in India is called Varna Vyavastha and the word Varna in Sanskrit literally means color of the skin. This also points at the racial origin of the caste system. Fair skin color is usually preferred to darker skin even today and hence perhaps the Aryans assumed to be the higher castes. A historical perspective. The roots of the caste system can be found in the Hindu scriptures as well. The caste system as elaborated in the early Indian texts and the Vedas looked at caste as a system of occupational divisions. According to scripture, Indian society could be broken down into a number of different groups known as the Varnas. Brahmins, the highest caste, were scholars and priests, while the Kshatriyas, warriors, rulers and landlords. The Vaishyas were the merchants, while the Shudras were manual laborers. Beyond these four basic Varnas are the untouchables, whom Gandhiji later called the children of God, the Harijans. And the system also has a space for outsiders and foreigners who did not conform to the caste system. 
within each varna there were several jatis individual endochemous groups the rig veda speaks of the brahmanas rajanya vaishya and shudra as having sprung from the head the arms the thighs and the feet of purusha the primal man it is repeatedly mentioned elsewhere that each human is the image of the purusha which would indicate that each human internalizes aspects of all the varnas many texts proclaim that one's nature alone and not birth determines to which varna one belongs it is generally agreed that in the ancient aryan society the varnas were functional groupings and not closed endogamous birth descent groups the vaishnavas emphatically define varna based on one's actions the bhagavad purana proclaims clearly that one's nature alone determines to which varna one belongs the tantrists claim that all those who accept the kula dharma become kals basham suggests that the jati system in its modern form developed very late the chinese scholar suan tsang in the 17th century was not aware of it subsequent development of the caste system the caste system took on different shades and meaning with the changing times and places once changed it never returned to its original form its character during different periods was altogether different from what exists today it is still in a transient phase it is different in the contexts of village locality region or religion in its long history india has had diverse social and religious currents as a response to historical events one might then credit the emergence of the modern jati system to the next fundamental change in the indian polity that occurred with the invasions of the turks an analysis of the term jati shows that its implications have varied with history many scholars believe that the caste system of jati that we have now emerged only about a thousand years ago it is seen as a direct effect of the catastrophic disruption to legal and political institutions caused by the turkish invasions with the destruction of the previous political order different occupational communities created their own systems of justice and governance now the dominant caste become the higher castes the rule setters trend setters and also the hierarchy varies from place to place as in each place the dominant caste there claim the higher rungs of the hierarchy caste now emerged as a rigid close endogamous system that gave identity and a sense of belonging pride and comfort in the wake of oppressive invaders this was perhaps the beginning of a hierarchical system which hitherto was a lateral system based on differences in occupation in this situation a local social structure developed which centered about the dominant community of that locale craftsmanship and caste although the origins of the caste system in india may be traced to racial beginnings with the aryan settlements later on it took an entirely different contour it developed with the needs of the agrarian settlement that grew into a feudal society in other words the caste system though originating in race subsequently developed into the feudal occupational division of the society in india too as in many other parts of the world apart from agriculture there was development of handicraft industry this happened and the caste system became the indian variation of the feudal occupation division of labor in society somewhat like the medieval european guild system thus although in theory there were only four castes the brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas and the shudras in reality there were hundreds of castes and sub castes in india many of which do not fit into the four traditional castes mentioned above for example the yadavs the kurmis jats the kayasthas the bhumihars gosins etc etc every vocation became a caste thus in north india badhai became a caste and so did lohar which is a blacksmith a sonar a goldsmith a kumbhar a potter 
dhobi, the washerman, the nai, the barber, darzi, the tailor, kasai, the butcher, mula, the fisherman, kevat, the boatman, teli, the oil presser, kahar, the water carrier, the gadadia, the sheep herder, etc. Thus, the caste system became a social institution corresponding to handicraft industry. Now, how the traditional caste system lost its validity? It is estimated that before the coming of the British into India, about 40% of the population of India was engaged in the handicraft industry, while the rest of the population was engaged in agriculture. When the British conquered India, they introduced the products of their mill industry into India and exorbitantly raised the export duties on the Indian handicraft products. Thereby, they practically destroyed the handicraft industry in India. The result was that by the end of the British rule, hardly 10% or even less of the population of India was still in the handicraft industry and the rest were made unemployed. In this way, about 30% of the population of India who were employed in handicraft industry became unemployed and were driven to starvation and destitution. At the end of the British rule, India, which was one of the most prosperous countries in the world, became one of the poorest, unable to feed itself with industrial development stalled as the British policy was not to permit industrialization of India, low life expectancy and very low literacy rate. As Angus Madison, the Cambridge University historian points out that India's share of world income fell from 22.6% in the year 1700 to 3.8% in the year 1952. In England and other European countries too, the handicrafts were destroyed by the mill products, but the handicraftsmen got employment in the mills, whereas in India, the British policy was to prevent industrialization of India with the result that the millions of handicraftsmen either starved or became beggars or criminals. Post-independence, industry developed and in the modern industrial age, the demand for skilled technical personnel was much larger than earlier. Hence, the traditional feudal method of teaching a craft in which only a handful of persons, usually the sons of the handicraftsmen, were taught no longer sufficed for modern society. Now, technical institutes or engineering colleges have become necessary where a large number of students are taught the technical skills. This destroyed the very basis of the caste system in which one had no choice in choosing one's vocation and had to follow his father's profession. The caste system in which one's vocation is chosen by one's birth is thus totally outmoded in the modern age. Today, a boy of the Badhai, the carpenter, caste comes from the rural areas in India to a city where he becomes an electrician or motor mechanic or takes up some other vocation. If he gets some education, he becomes a clerk or even a professional. He no longer follows his father's profession. In this connection, it may be noted that in the revenue records in many states in our country, one often finds recorded. A son of B, cast Lohar, a smith, vocation agriculture, or C, son of D, cast Badhai, a carpenter, vocation is agriculture, or E, son of F, cast Kumhar, a potter, vocation is agriculture, etc. This indicates that the ancestors of these persons were in those professions. Thus started the era of caste by birth sans profession. Change of contours in the ethos of the caste system. Many people think that the caste system did a lot of damage to India. This is undoubtedly true of modern times. But it must also be said that in the feudal age, the caste system did good to India because it corresponded to the feudal occupational division of labor in society, which resulted in the great development of the productive forces at that time. Some aspects of the evils of caste system today were not present in those days and hence the system did well. However, it must be kept in mind that what is valid, good at one point in time, need not be so and often is not so at other times. This is certainly true of the caste system in India. Once a factor of social identity and stability, it has now rotted into evil to contend with. It is a myth. 
that the lower castes of today were always treated with indignity. In fact, earlier these castes were earning their livelihood from their vocation. It was only when industry destroyed their handicraft that they became unemployed. An unemployed man becomes a poor man and is not respected. And then they began to be treated with indignity. Thus what was a respectable, respected community in yesteryears deteriorated into a community of the lower ranks. Also, let us reiterate that by now it was not profession by birth that determined caste, but only birth. For instance, the Chamars were at one time a respectable caste because they earned their livelihood by doing leather work. Only when leather companies destroyed their handicraft and thereby their livelihood that they sank in the social ladder so much so that today to call a person a Chamar is often regarded as a word of insult. Similarly, other castes whose handicraft occupations were destroyed by the industry also became unemployed and thereby felt in the social order. And thereby fell in the social order. Caste practices, positive aspects. Basically, it is just a division of labor which any large corporation in the world would like to do to adopt by ensuring that various groups like the finance team, the marketing team, the production team and the administrative team focus deeply on their specific jobs and combine their efforts into a large successful project. The evils of the caste system emerge when some castes feel they are performing superior work to the rest and start disrespecting other castes. This has to be corrected by the social engineering and education. Thus, what was once a respectable social institution of stability and identity, the caste system is now seen as a redundant evil. Caste practices, the negative aspects. The caste system is one of the greatest social evils plaguing our country today. It is acting as a powerful social and political divisive force in our country at a time when it is absolutely essential for us to be united. If we wish to face our nation's challenges, it is a curse on our country which must be speedily eradicated if we wish to progress. Entry of caste into politics led to unchecked growth of casteism. Materialism and political ambitions are responsible for the discontent of various castes. It divides the Indians into innumerable and unbridgeable groups. Politicization of caste needs to be stopped. In the modern political understanding of the caste system, the element of caste is predominant and the element of system is less. There is a difference between caste system and casteism. Today, casteism rules the rooster while the caste system has lost its relevance. We may consider a few facts to realize how strongly caste is entrenched in our society today at two levels, the political and the social. Politically, our politics is largely governed by caste vote banks. When the time comes for selecting candidates for the elections, a study is made of the numerical caste distribution in a constituency because voters in most areas vote on caste basis. Even the so-called intellectuals tend to operate on caste lines. Thus, in the elections to many professional bodies also, professionals tend to vote for the candidates of their caste. Many castes want to be declared as OBCs or scheduled, scheduled castes or to get the benefits of reservation. Even some OBCs strive to be declared as MBCs, the most backward castes or scheduled castes. So-called socially lower ranks are much preferred for reasons of personal comfort and ambition. Fake caste certificates have become rampant as is often witnessed in our law courts to get jobs or admissions in educational institutions. Social, often orchestrated violence often occurs more for political gains and are attributed to caste clashes. And socially, Although the points above is not untrue, yet still there are genuine caste conflicts also based on perceived professed superiority of one caste over another. The Indian polity is still largely endogamous and not very forthcoming with regard to inter-caste marriages. Pride, 
or self-identity in one's caste, while may be legitimate, does not justify the disrespecting of another caste, which happens in many cases. The road forward. The caste system today has become totally redundant, although still strongly entrenched into the psyche of the polity at large exploiting the long historical predisposition to identify with one's caste. Although it is of zero relevance now, the caste system is now being artificially propped up socially by some vested interests, for example, the vote bank politics. However, when the basis of an institution has been destroyed as described earlier, propagating it or uploading it is the preserving the bath water long after the baby was outgrown the bathtub. It can only breed disastrous virus leading to a devastating destruction of the society. The society must be cleansed of the ill effects of casteism which has remained as a residue of a once relevant caste system by social engineering and education. The process has suddenly began and is going on in the right direction abate not the required pace. What will rid us of the evils of the caste system is education, giving correct perspective about the caste system, social movements of concerned civic bodies and of course intercaste marriages. Social institutions have always dominated the human polity. One of the major social institutions in India has been caste. Caste is a collection of families bearing a common name with a common ancestor and inherited profession forming a single homogeneous community. The caste system took root in India when the Aryans conquered the dark colored races inhabiting India at that time. The caste system took on different shades and meaning with the changing times. Once changed, it never returned to its original form. Its character during different periods was altogether different from what exists today. The caste system as elaborated in the early Indian texts and the Vedas looked at caste as a system of occupational divisions. The next fundamental change occurred with the invasions of the Turks. Caste, which hitherto was a lateral system based on differences in occupation, now emerged as a rigid hierarchical closed endogamous system that gave identity and a sense of belonging, pride and comfort in the wake of oppressive invaders. The caste system was social institution corresponding to handicraft industry. Post independence as India industrialized, the demand for skilled technical personnel became much larger. This destroyed the very basis of the caste system that propagated occupational inheritance. Basically, it was just a division of labor which any large corporation would like to ensure. The evils of the caste system emerge when some castes feel that they are performing superior work to the rest and start disrespecting other castes. Once a factor of social identity and stability, caste has now rotted into an evil to contend with. Caste is strongly still entrenched in our society today at two levels, the political and the social. Today, casteism rules the rooster, while the caste system has lost its relevance. The society must be cleansed of all the ill effects of casteism, which has remained as a residue of a once relevant caste system.